Hello and welcome to part two of machine learning and pattern recognition for use with stocks and forex trading. Now, you might not realize it, but you've actually just made a huge accomplishment already, and that's that you're viewing part two. If you look at a lot of series on the internet, especially tougher ones, there's usually at least a 25-40% drop off between part one and part two, right? So you've already taken the initiative and you're already ahead, and uh, probably what's going to turn out to be of at least 25% of everyone else. So, congratulations on being serious. If you continue devoting some time, soon you'll be in that top 1 to 5% and you'll have some cool new skills. And also, to give you a bit of a teaser, you're only uh, just a few videos away from coding uh, pattern recognition to find something like this. This blue line is the pattern in question, and all these other lines are historical patterns that followed a close pattern to this one. And then what we'll end up doing is predicting the future results based on these past pattern results. Definitely something to be looking forward to, and that's really only a few videos away from here. But the first thing that we really want to do is go ahead and plot out the data that we have so we can actually see what we're working with and see what, um, what our goals are. Also, it would be useful just to get uh, comfortable with matplotlib because we're going to be using that. So we're going to run through just opening up this data and looking at the data that we have first. So uh, we're going to need a few imports and that's going to be uh, import matplotlib and then we're going to go ahead and import some other stuff even though we've imported the full matplotlib we also want to import various things as specific things. So we're also going to do import matplotlib.pyplot as plt import matplotlib.ticker as, and actually, you know what, we don't even really need this, well, we'll use it, I suppose, as m ticker, and then import matplotlib.dates as m dates. Finally, we're going to import numpy as np. Now we're going to do a function, it's going to be graph raw fx, and under here, we're going to have um, numpy open up this text file and create a numpy array for us, so we're going to say date bid ask equals np.load text. So this is going to load up any text file you have. It can also do arrays uh, even though it is called load text. And the text we want to load up is going to be gbp usd1d.txt. So if you uh, got the, those files that I got or got you to download from centex.com, if you take the zip, unzip it, and there's two, there should be two text files in there. One is gbp usd1day and one is gbp usd uh, one month. Make sure both of those text files are in the directory, right? So in the same directory as the script. So not the folder, but both text files. So if you just have the folder, it's not going to find it. So you would need to put the folder in front. So uh, just keep that in mind. And we're going to say unpack equals true. And the delimiter of this file is a comma. And the converters, this is so we can uh, convert a date stamp to plotting uh, dates and that's going to be the zero with element so the first element in there so let me just pull up the file real quick uh, this is our this is our gbp usd one day text file so you've got the date stamp and then bid ask and here we can see year and then 05 is the month 01 is the day and then hours minutes seconds so we come back over here and our converters is going to be the zeroth element. How do we want to convert that? We're going to use m dates and then we're going to use strp date to num. So strip date to num, but it's strp, no i. And then in parentheses, you give it the format that this is in and you do it with a percent and then a character that denotes whatever that is. So first we'll do percent y. So that's for a full year. Then we do percent lowercase, oops, percent, not an sign, percent m, percent day, so month, day, in number format, percent capital H for hours, percent capital M, percent capital S. And that's the whole thing. If you had dashes or something in a date, you would also put those in there. But again, we don't really have that. It's just a straight stamp. So that's the conversion that we must make. Oops. Put that back and come down here. 
Now the next thing we want to do is plot this. So we're going to define the figure that we're going to plot onto. So fig equals plot dot figure. And our fig size will be uh, 10 by 7. Next, we're going to do ax1 equals plt dot subplot to grid. And within here, the grid we'll make is just a 40 40 uh, size. We'll start the plot at the 0, 0. And row span will equal 40. And col span will also equal 40. If I'm going too fast at this point for you guys, as far as defining how to make this chart, then I highly suggest you check out the Python charting tutorial. Um, I've got a whole series on all this stuff, and it goes in way further depth than this. Um, so if you do feel like you're lost, I highly suggest you watch that. Otherwise, just kind of copy what I'm doing, because honestly, uh, this part is not the main part of this series. We are just trying to display the data, and we will continue displaying data. Um, but this isn't really integral to the uh, entire understanding of machine learning. Next. Uh, the next thing we want to do is we're going to go ax1.plot. What do we want to plot? We want to plot the date, and then we want to plot the bid, and then also ax1.plot, uh, and we want to plot the date, oops, date ask. And then what we want to do is format the x axis so it's in like date format, right? So ax1.x axis dot set underscore major underscore formatter. And in parentheses, M dates dot capital D A T E capital F O R M A T T E R. And that date format. Now you can choose anything you want. So let's make this date a little bit prettier than it was in, in the first time around. So percent capital Y dash percent lower M dash percent lower D space percent capital H colon percent capital M colon percent capital S. And we've closed everything off already. Next, the other thing we're going to do is we'll say uh, plot. And um, actually, we're not to touch that. Let's just do plt.grid true and plt.show. Now, it's going to be kind of an ugly looking um, x and y axis teak, uh, teaks, ticks, but you'll get what I'm saying in a minute. So let's just bring this up. And so run it after you've saved, of course, and do graph raw fx, hit enter, hopefully no errors. And we got date formatter. Oh, we misspelled with uh, date formatter. We put three T's in there. So let's fix that real quick. Save it, run. We'll go again. Oops. P, run that again. Hopefully y'all didn't typo date formatter. There we go. It should pop up for you guys now. And here is the data. There's a couple of things that are just kind of ugly about this data, right? You've got the date stamps are kind of running over each other. And the values over here are kind of being like uh, converted because they have a lot of zeros in them, right? It's tick data. Um, and uh, this data goes way past a pip, right? It go, I think it goes two places past a typical pip. So anyway, this is our data. This is a one day of uh, bid ask tick data. The only really thing I wanted you guys to see is that it's, you know, we've got a fairly volatile day. And overall, at least on this day, the data is rising. But I believe on our over true overall, we could bring up uh, that data. And I believe overall for the month of May, it was actually falling. Um, I got this error because it never, uh, we, we misspelled date formatter. Anyway, um, that's the basic chart. That's the basic data that we're going to be dealing with. And one of the interesting things about bid ask, let me bring it back up again real quick, is you can see the gap or the what's known as a spread. And you can almost see pretty much every time the spread gets wide, right, it's either going to fall or go up, right? Volatility is, you know, pretty much attracted to that spread, and which makes sense, right? If if more people or like less people are willing to sell, and that gap starts to widen up. Well, it's probably the case that the uh, that stuff's going to go up or down. Same thing when it scrunches up, right? Like here, you've got scrunched up, and like there's really no gap here because everyone's like chasing it, right? So there's also some pretty cool stuff that you can do with spread. However, we're not really going to be dealing with spread, at least in the initial videos. Uh, we're going to be dealing with price change, but the option is there for spread. In the next video, I'm going to show you 
one more thing about spread and then we're actually going to continue on moving away from spread or at least moving without spread. But spread is definitely something you'll want to consider uh, in the future if you do decide to go down this uh, quant trading route. So anyways, that's going to conclude the uh, second video. In the third video, let's, we're going to at least show you a few more things about charting and uh, we'll put up an interesting graph with spread. And then from there, uh, we'll begin working on some patterns, setting up those, and then the machine recognition of those patterns. Definitely some cool stuff to look forward to. If you're not subscribed, I highly suggest you subscribe. I'm not going to release this series all at once, uh, so they'll just be coming out uh, as I end up making the videos. So if you're subscribed, you should get something in your email or something that tells you that, hey, I've got another video. Or you can just keep checking back. Anyway... Um, that's going to include the video. As always, thanks for watching. Thanks for all the support and the subscriptions. And until next time.